I thought it'd be fun to make a video of the six weird things that has helped me in my recovery so far. I can highly recommend just embracing the weirdness because if you listen to any recovery stories, people who have got through these things, it's always from lots of weird things and just being open-minded to them. So these are the weird things that has helped me. Number one, get yourself an ancient OAP dog. So this isn't exactly a weird thing, not gonna lie, I just really wanted to have Amber in a video today. After reaching my all-time physical low, I got to the point where I started having to pay serious attention to my pacing strategies. And to begin this, I established my baseline. Because post-exertional malaise was such an issue for me at the time, I had to figure out what I could do without crashing the next day. Because it, this, this meant that you know, I was always able to do the activity and I didn't feel too bad doing it, but it was always the aftermath that was the problem. So to begin with, I started with walks around the garden, literally. And I just built on that. And as soon as I started taking longer walks, because I get so carried away and, you know, I'll go out and be like, yeah, it's fine, I can, I can go and walk for like an hour. And then like, I would have just suffered for days. So in the beginning, I started taking Amber out for walks because she is 15 and she is so slow, aren't you? It means that I can really only walk for about 10 minutes with her because that's pretty much as far as she can walk. So that was a good way of making sure I kept to the pacing strategy. Mm -hmm. And aside from being a little pacing dog, she was also my little therapy dog, and she still is, she always will be, because no matter how bad my day is, I could just sit with her on my lap, just giving her cuddles, and she just makes me feel so much happier. Even when I come down for breakfast and she's just sitting there like a little mole, and you know, she lifts her head, and oh, she's just the best dog ever. Number two, Barefoot walking. This is definitely a weird thing. <laughs> About a year ago, I signed up to this online sleep conference and one of the speakers specialized in circadian rhythms, which is basically your body's internal clock for lots of different systems, such as cortisol rhythms. And this sleep expert said, one of the best things you can do for your sleep starts in the morning and that is to get up and go straight outside and get sunlight in your eyes. And his talk sounded pretty convincing. It was really interesting actually. So I decided to add this to my morning routine. I'd also heard of a thing called grounding, which is also called earthing, which is the act of walking barefoot on the earth. And apparently when doing this, your body picks up free ions from the earth's surface that acts as antioxidants in your system. And there was even an eight week study on grounding that showed improved sleep and decreased stress levels when participants practice grounding daily. So I pretty much combined both these things then, going outside to walk up and down the garden, get sunlight in my eyes and going barefoot to do the grounding. So every morning I put my porridge on the hob and <laughs> Pace around the garden, barefoot, looking at the sky like an absolute weirdo. I have no idea what my neighbours must be thinking when they're looking out their bedroom window and they see this every morning. But this is something that has really helped me and I really enjoy doing it. Even there's been times when the ground has been crispy, it's been frozen and I'm still walking up and down there on my bare feet. I think even the dogs at this stage look at me like what the hell is she doing? But I think especially at the moment, because I'm working remote, having that time to kind of leave the house in the morning, walk about and then come back in, it's like you're starting a new day. So this is something I recommend trying. Number three, squatting, toothbrushing. This is so random, but basically when I started getting a bit of fitness back, but I wasn't really, I couldn't really do much for long periods of time. 
I incorporated a habit of doing squats while brushing my teeth. Uh, this meant that, you know, I brush my teeth every day, so I'd always remember to do it in the mornings. And um, it's short, it's only three minutes of squatting basically, so um, it was the right time for me to do this and I basically stuck to doing this and I still do it today. So how that works is I start brushing my teeth, then I do 10 squats, so just one, two, three, four, just like that. Then when I get to 10, I start doing squat pulses. So I'll go down one, two, up, then down one, two, three, up, and then down one, two, three, four, and up. And I do that all the way to 10. And that takes just under three minutes. And I truly believe that this little small routine has really helped grow my strength even though it's so short like if you think of the accumulation of doing that every day for i must be doing that for nearly a year i don't know when i started it but it's been a long time uh and i really think it's helped my strength so even though it is so weird it's something that's helped and i think if you can incorporate little tiny things like this like even if it was you know maybe if even if you're sitting on the ground brushing your teeth and you can stretch forward and touch your toes a couple of times just like these little changes can contribute to big changes number four karaoke this is another very weird one but when i was having really dark days going through recovery like those big black hole days of just misery, despair, hopelessness, when you'd just be lying in bed crying, thinking, is this my life now? Like really severely, severely unhappy times. And um, I can't remember how I started it, but one day I got my brother's amp downstairs and plugged in like a shite microphone and just I uh, got up on YouTube some karaoke songs and even though I felt so terrible I just started singing and it just lifted my mood so much it was amazing An old man turned 98 he won the lottery and died the next day be raging it's a black fly in your Chardonnay, it's a death row pardon. Two minutes too late, isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like rain. Like I could literally be like lying in bed crying for hours, and then be like, right, kick myself off the arse, put a good song on, and just start singing, even though I felt like a potato. <laughs> And mentally, it really helped me kind of break out of that a little bit. Um, but it was just like, now I think about this, it just seems so ridiculous. Like I'm sitting there like crying like a baby and then next minute I'm like, oh. But it is amazing how much it's helped me. And I recommend doing anything that can just help kind of like break that cycle, I suppose, of just misery. Like it's obviously, you know, it's not, you know, it's not gonna like fix all your problems, but anything that can mentally lift you a little bit, even if it's so ridiculous, then it's just a good thing to do. And number five, energy medicine and EFT. I've put these in the same category because they're definitely similar on the weird scale. <laughs> And they also have a lot of similarities. Energy medicine is something that I've gotten into more recently uh, and it has really helped me so much. And to explain what that is, it's a field of complementary therapy based on the interactions of the human energy field. It utilizes techniques from time-honored traditions such as acupuncture, yoga, kinesiology and kai gong I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Um, 
So it looks, it looks very weird, but I started using Donna Eden's daily morning energy uh, routine. And it's basically takes about five minutes to do. And it's like a series of tapping and stretching. Um, and I do that every morning. And when I started this, I couldn't believe how much more energized I felt after it. I can't even explain it. And I've, I read most of Donna Eden's book and I'm, it still blows my mind because it seems so simple, but yet so effective. So I'm gonna put in the description a link to her daily morning energy routine because you've got nothing to lose uh, other than how weird you're gonna look. <laughs> um, so I recommend it. Emotional freedom technique is an alternative treatment for physical pain and emotional stress. It's also referred to as tapping or psychological acupressure. People who use this technique believe tapping the body can create a balance in your energy system and treat pain. According to its developer, Gary Craig, a disruption in energy is the cause of all negative emotions and pain. So this is a technique that the Optimum Health Clinic taught us. And I remember learning this on the 90 day plan. And, you know, we all just thought this is just so weird, so weird, but it's also been something that's been quite helpful. I think it, especially in those times of despair, I quite often use Brad Yates on YouTube and did some of his EFT. And, um, it's really weird because you're kind of talking to yourself and tapping your face like such a weirdo but it, it I just I don't know how to explain it. it it just it helps and I'm also gonna put some links in the description to EFT because I think it's uh yeah I, I don't think I know enough about how it works to really talk about it but it is something I've used it is something that the Optimum Health Clinic teach and it is something that helps a lot of people. But both these things look very weird. Number six. <laughs> so just to wrap this video up, this is how I end my day. And this is, is also very weird. So I basically sit cross-legged on my bed, staring out the window. And it's almost like a little moment of sort of mindfulness and sometimes I try to think of the things that like what am I grateful of today sounds so cheesy but um, and sometimes I do a bit of the energy routine so like tapping some points and stretching and sometimes I'll just think about what's happened during the day and how I want to feel tomorrow and um, yeah just basically just sitting staring out the window and again if my neighbours were outside and looked up they would be really freaked out it'd be like something from a horror film <laughs> but this is just something that really helps me sleep I think uh, if you like are on your phone till last minute and then go to sleep it's not really good whereas I think if you just take a moment to I guess sort of recalibrate and just get your mind together then it's it's quite good so pretty much all for this video. Um, I've been a bit slow on getting videos out at the minute. It's been a pretty hectic few weeks, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I've got a list of videos I wanna get sorted for next month, so they shall be coming soon. So thank you for watching and goodbye.